Hello, and welcome back. Currently offline, but don't fret, my friends. I'm still going to provide content to you, and right now, this video is about Alice in Wonderland. Uh, more specifically, uh, Tim Burton's take on Alice in Wonderland, or should be called Return to Wonderland, because this film suffers from hook you know. A person who was younger had some great adventures and uh, forgot those adventures along the way in the real world. Kind of like what happened to Robin Williams and Hook, as him being Peter Pan. And here, Alice is uh, in her mid-teens womanhood and is uh, being pursued by a really goofy-looking ginger fuck whose name I can't pronounce, but my god, he's the most... He looks even more British than Kaja, but it, it is... We like to, even to make him more British, he has to have a monocle top hat and more messed up teeth than the current people of Britain already have. Sorry, Kajib. <laughs> but, um... For substance, not much. A lot of flash, not much else. This film is very heavily on the CGI, which I'm not opposed to. It, it's a pretty film. It's, um... I wouldn't say it's breathtakingly beautiful, but it is definitely keeps... It's like a shiny quarter, you know? It, it's just what it is. It 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 kept me somewhat entertained through the whole film. Me being a pretty big Lewis Carroll fan, and uh, reading uh, the two books, uh, the first and Looking Glass one not. And um, if you don't know this about me, I'm going to say something. Um, I'm not a really big PC gamer, but one of the few PC games that I really do like is American McGee's Alice, which is a really neat, twisted take on the Alice Wonderland. It's a sequel like this is trying to be, and I feel that that film would have been a lot more fun and a lot darker than that. Though, I'm not entirely sure, is uh, Alice in Wonderland public domain? Because I've seen a lot of different interpretations by different companies, like there was that new uh, Showtime show Alice that was on, a. Uh, Dustin was talking about that how emotions are drugs, somewhat kind of weird thing. I didn't. It kind of kind of perked my interest. I might take a look into it, but uh, you know, it's like one of those Doctor Who budgeted type shows that he likes watching. But um, <laughs> I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to budget. That's why I watch a lot of CSI. <laughs> uh, but uh, moving on from that, this film, uh, not. Bad. Was this supposed to be a sequel to the animated feature that was like many years ago? If that, there's a lot of continuity errors, like how the Queen of Hearts is not called Queen of Hearts, she's just called the Red Queen, and her stature and posture is way different than before. Before she was a tall, fat woman, and uh, in this one she's a short woman with a big head. It was just, is it just a, a sequel to the book? Is it just, um,. I'd only think the animated feature, though the animated feature is quite beautiful and quite uh, pristine to this day. I still enjoyed that a lot more. One of the few parts that I did enjoy was, you know, uh, was uh, the Cheshire Cat. I just love that. That thing was just handsome, just just beautiful with that smile and the type of, uh, what do you call it, um, personality traits that he did have. Um... Of course, there's not always thing boys have to talk about Johnny Depp and his role as the Mad Hatter. Um, the Mad Hatter being a, such of a kind of soul companion to uh, to uh, to Alice, I didn't really buy because in the, in the book and in the animated show, she was the Mad Hatter was not really that close to Alice. She was just she was just a wandering waif that came across this tea, weird tea party, and that was about it. And there was it's something that felt like they had a kinship. Ah, I didn't really buy it, and uh, um, it's just meh. It wasn't horrible. It was just a fun feature. It wasn't too darkly disturbing. Um, if you want to look up disturbing, play the video game uh, American McGee's Alice because that had a lot of disturbing tropes, which I did like. That Alice, it it's based on the game. Sorry, spoilers. That Alice, the Wonderland is all in her head, and after her parents' uh, house burned down, she was the only survivor. Years later, that she's in a Cam uh, comatose like state, you know, she's like catatonic, and uh, she goes back to Wonderland and she has this kind of it's all twisted and messed up because her psyche is so far damaged. And here it just feels like it's just a very generic story of an invasion of an invading army, you know, good army has to fight empire and so not. And um, 
With this, uh, the Jabberwocky in here is voiced by Christopher Lee. That's always a plus, though only gets like maybe three lines of dialogue and then he gets his cut. His, th his tongue cut and just, eh. I thought it was very much just a meh film. Um. Okay, notes. Um. What's his name? Christopher. Christopher Freeman? What's his name? Crispin Freeman, yeah, yeah, he was great as the, as the concierge of the of the Red Queen. I thought he was great, and he hits on Alice uh, when she's in her quasi giant form when she's like eight feet tall. That might that might say something that Tim Burton has a giantism fetish, but huh, who wouldn't? When she's like that, you know, she's eight feet tall and she's hot. So, meh. Worst thing, crush pelvis. So, oh, that's just me. Um. Anything else? Um, check it out if you're interested. It's not one of Tim Burton's best nor worst. I'm not a big Tim Burton hater fan. Um, yeah. Meh.